Hey folks, Drunken Homemaker here, and today we're gonna to be talking about pest control, specifically on our houseplants. So like most people, um, the last couple of weeks have been spent at home in self-isolation and uh, social distancing. So I have gotten to spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my plants. However, that means me discovering some pests that have otherwise gone unnoticed until this point. So yeah, so this is the pink illusion, strawberry syngonium potentially, that I got at Angle Acres a few weeks back. It is no surprise that it came with some mealybugs. I just didn't notice it right away. Um, I say it's not surprising. They have four or five massive greenhouses. It comes with the territory. Um, and anyone who tells you different is just not being terribly realistic. Um, and what I did notice is that it has mealybugs and possibly aphids, which it might've gotten at my house because I did have an aphid infestation at the end of the growing season last year that um, has been sort of wintering over in some of my plants that are quarantined upstairs. So that being said, I am going to talk to you about how I take care of pest problems in my house plants. So please let me know uh, what you do in the comments section, um, if you do something similar to me or if you do something different. So that being said, let's get into what I'm gonna use. So I do have a combination of aphids and mealybugs on uh, this pink syngonium and this aloe plant that I don't know the variety of. Welcome to my life. So I'm gonna put those aside and talk a little bit about what sort of supplies you will need. You will need rubbing alcohol that sort of helps to get the pests off the leaves initially. And what I use with the rubbing alcohol, which you will see me do in a, in a moment, I either, if they're bigger leaves, I use uh, cotton rounds. That's what I have on hand. And I like these because they're sort of flat like the leaves tend to be. And then I also use cotton swabs. And I use the cotton swabs um, for those little intricate areas. So for example, if this had bigger leaves, I would probably use the cotton rounds like this, right? But something like this, I would probably drench in alcohol and get in there, especially because this one's got a lot of, yeah. There's, it, this is the one that has gotten me, mealybugs really bad and it's hard for me to see them because they can they have so many places to hide. I'll do a close up of this plant so you can sort of see what I'm talking about. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that the pest can harbor over in the soil. So sometimes people will remove the first few inches um, and replace that. That's something you can definitely do to prevent the problem from continuing to happen. The next thing is a organic insecticide. Um, so you can do a horticultural spray uh, that you can buy um, already pre-mixed. What I do because I am cheap is I make my own insecticide. I have um, organic neem oil already. Um, so what I do is I get a spray bottle. I fill it up to the top, um, but you want to do about a liter of water if you can. The recipe that I, that I found was a liter of water a teaspoon of neem oil and half a teaspoon of dish soap. I do, I basically fill one of these spray bottles up to the very, very top um, with warm water that I can dissolve uh, the neem oil and the dish soap in. So I hope that helps. Um, I will show you uh, what I do step by step. So step one of what you would do is take your cotton round or cotton swab depending on the leaf that you're working with and drench it in alcohol. And what you want to do is you want to tap the insect or the whatever you're attacking. So when the alcohol hits the either mealybug or aphid or whatever you're sort of targeting, spider mite, um, it'll be easier to just wipe it off the leaf. Make sure that you're throwing it out somewhere where it can't get to the rest of your plants. That's really, really important. The second thing that you do is just making sure to cover the whole plant not drench it in alcohol, that's not really great for the plant, but making sure that you're at least wiping down the parts that you don't even see have insects on them. Um, that's important just to make sure you, you're starting with a nice, clean, clean plant. Step two, if this is what you wanna do, is to remove the first either inch or inch and a half of soil 
and making sure that you're replacing it with fresh soil that doesn't have any pests. And finally, step three, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure to take your plant to a place that you can spray it freely with neem oil. Uh, sorry, with insecticide made from neem oil. Very, very important that you don't, word of caution, I'm gonna say this a million times, learn from my mistakes. Do not spray it with a concentrated form of neem oil. You can hurt your plants. You can do a lot more damage in the long run than you would be helping your plant. So make sure that when you are using your spray that you are using a very diluted form of neem oil. Again, the recipe that I, that I found was a liter of water, a teaspoon of neem oil, and half a teaspoon of dish soap. Another note, when you are using these types of sprays, make sure that you are letting it dry on the leaves so you're not washing it afterwards. You, you want it to stay on the leaves because that's what's gonna help eradicate the problem. But also making sure that you're not putting your plants in direct sunlight after that. And you wanna make sure to quarantine these plants. They, if they're gonna be alongside your other plants that are healthy, these, these pests don't look like it, but they move fast and they will become a big problem. So these plants, ever since I discovered the problem, have been quarantined from the rest of my plants. All right, so this is the plant in question. So I'm gonna show you right here what a mealy bug looks like. They're pretty gross looking, so trigger warning. Yeah, they're pretty gross. Um, they look like little cotton balls that have got little antennae. Um, that's about as close as I can get to them. I've taken a cotton round and drenched it in alcohol. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wipe down that leaf. And then this is what they sort of look like when they're on there. You see like something brown on there? That means you've got the mealy bug. Once that little cotton part has been doused in alcohol, it just kind of disappears. And so what I do is I take all of my leaves front and back. I don't know if you can see this. There's mealybugs in the back. There's it what looks like aphids. So I take my cotton swab or my cotton round and I try to get it all. And this one has a lot of mealybugs. And I'm just wiping it down, trying to get every nook and cranny. I hope that you can see that. That was one leaf down and I'm just going to examine it. It looks like I got just about everything off, except for like a little aphid that's there. But I'm just gonna do that for the whole plant. And you wanna make sure to do front and back, and then you wanna get into the stems, you know, and wipe down the stems a bit. Because the other thing to keep in mind is that right here in the base, this is their favorite little hiding place, and I think there's one right there. So you wanna make sure that you are wiping down the stems as much as possible. You know, within reason. Uh, I know it's hard to get in there, but and then there's another mealybug right there. Just wiping down that leaf and making sure that you, you know, change out your cotton round after a few leaves. And just after this step, you're gonna notice a big, big difference. Also let me know in the comments below if you know what type of variety of Syngonium this is. All I know is that it had pink leaves and that's what sold me. All right, and then we've got one right here. See how they like to hide in the little, it's hiding in the little crotch, the crotch of the plant. Of the plant. Look at this one, ugh, gross. Look at this one, can you see that? That one's got mealy bugs, it's got aphids. It's pretty bad. Now, the, the mealy bugs probably came from the greenhouse, and like I said, I'm not too butthurt about it because it's a it's an enormous greenhouse. I would be surprised if they didn't have pests, to be perfectly honest. And any of the leaves that are sort of crunchy like this, just to make my life easier, I'm just gonna snap them off because it's not like it was doing great to begin with. So I'm not gonna waste time trying to save it. And then the little guys, I'm gonna make sure to wipe down because these look pretty healthy. It's just, all right. So just make sure that you've gotten everything front and back. 
I'm unfurling this leaf because I want to make sure I get any leaves, get anything that might be on that leaf. Uh, let's see, this one's not looking too great, so I'm just going to snap that one off. Look at that. I think that's an aphid. And look at that, a mealybug right there. They're so gross. I know people are grossed out by them. So what you want to do is you just want to make sure to get everything. Once you've done that, check the stems. It's not going to be perfect. That's the thing I want you to realize. This is a process. And just wipe down the stems a bit. In spite of this plant struggling, it's still pushing out new growth, and that's a really good sign. What you can do also, um, and people I know people do, is you can remove the first inch or so, uh, or the first half inch of soil, and change it out with non-pesty gross soil, or non-gross soil, really. Um, and that should be pretty good to help you um, eradicate the problem. Uh, so let's move on to the next plant. So now with this aloe, they are very good at hiding. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to see what I mean on the aloe because they are incredibly good at hiding in this aloe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cotton swab and I mean drench it to the point where it's dripping a bit. All right, that might be a bit better. So right here I can see a little guy. Just gonna wipe that off. And we're gonna check. So sometimes what I do with the cotton swab, I drench it and then I just sort of squeeze it in between leaves so that if there is something that I can't see in between, it's at least getting making contact with the alcohol. And that's why you drench it. Um, so the reason I have trouble with this aloe, with mealybugs coming back, is because it's really hard to see. You know, and if a, a plant is that far gone where you feel like it's not worth rescuing, then you can absolutely do that. I don't mind doing this. I won't, I won't go as far as to say that it's therapeutic to do this because it's, it's really not. But I don't mind doing this. This is, I think, part of owning a plant is taking care of it, you know. Yeah, that's all I can see on this one, unfortunately. The other day I saw, and that, that's the thing, it was a miracle that I caught it because I really couldn't see very much of anything, and I don't think, I don't think I see anything now. But I'm going to show you, um, with these, it does, it does help to sort of soak the cotton swab and then just squeeze it in between the leaves just to get that alcohol inside the leaves. All right, next step. Okay, so the next step is to spray them down with some sort of insecticidal uh, neem-based or some other type of pre-mixed insecticide. I would be really careful what you use though. You wanna make sure that you use something that is not gonna hurt you, <laughs> number one. Make sure that you're using something that's safe to be around pets um, and kids. If you have kids in the household, look at that. This one wasn't unfurled and they were in there. So annoying. Obviously, like I, I, it's a little hard because I'm doing this for the camera for me to see up close, but I'll probably hit this one again in about a week just to make sure I, I caught everything. And that's sort of the, the key thing with um, fighting insects is to make sure that you're doing this treatment at least once a week until you realize like the problem is really and truly eradicated. So I didn't replace the first layer of soil just because I'm probably going to be doing this again in a week. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my homemade insecticide, which I talked a little bit about the recipe for, and I'm just going to go ahead and drench the plant, making sure that I get front and back of the leaf. Very important. And you want to do this somewhere where you can sort of let the, the plant drip dry. So, you know, if you can do it in your bathtub, do it. I just wanted to make sure that you guys could see it. And what I'm going to make sure to do also is to hit the first, the, la the top layer of soil as well. Because that's really important too, because remember, there's still stuff in there. Okay. 
I'm gonna have to wipe down this table afterwards. So I'm just making sure, and this is what you want. You want it to be dripping with the solution and then you just wanna let it dry on its own, let it drip dry. So I'm gonna put that one to the side and we're gonna hit this aloe with that. And this aloe is gonna be really important to get the insides of it because remember, we can't, we can't quite get in there where they could be harboring over and they very likely are. So I'm just making sure to hit every part of the aloe and including the top layer of soil because we're gonna have to be doing this for the next few weeks. And the only reason I didn't change out the soil is because I will do that at the very end once I realize like, okay, there, there's probably nothing harboring over anymore. I will change the soil, um, the top layer of soil. You see, I think I saw one too. Um, but this way the neem oil gets in deep to the little crevices that I can't get to. And then we just let it drip dry. And what you want to make sure to do, uh, these are now partners in crime. They will be quarantined together. They will self-isolate together, which is so sweet. Um, and yeah, that's basically what I do when I'm having issues with pests on my plants. And uh, I'm going to make sure to keep these out of direct sunlight and I'm going to quarantine them in their own little area. So that is my guide to um, controlling pest problems on your house plants making sure that you uh, eradicate the problem right away, address it right away. At the very least, move that plant away from your healthy plants as soon as you see any pests. So make sure that you keep those plants um, out of direct sunlight because that could hurt the leaves and making sure that you are keeping them away from your healthy plants. If you have any questions for me, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Make sure you let me know if you've had pest problems on your house plants and how you've dealt with them in the past. Uh, make sure you click like on this video if you like content like this. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified when I upload. And as always, thank you for coming on this journey with me, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!